to every one of you. We want to thank you for all that the Lord has given us here this afternoon. Father, we thank you. I know we have not come to church on Sunday services, but nevertheless, God is still good. And he's going to make sure that everything runs smoothly tonight. The day doesn't write down tonight, but God is still a God with us. Welcome to Church Life Church of our Bliss experience. We're broadcasting live from right here at Church Life Town Church Live, Northwest Downtown Plaza of Nashville, in the beautiful city of Downtown in the city of New York County, Downtown. This is truly a blessing to be in the house of God, to be brought to you by the Northwest Downtown Plaza of Nashville in collaboration with as well as Bright SBU Christian. Truly really a blessing to have you here this evening with us. You know, when you are joining us in person right here at Northwest Downtown, or you're joining us via Zoom or, or YouTube or Instagram or Facebook or wherever the, whatever other social media you're joining us on this evening, we just want to welcome you in our presence and in the presence of the Lord of hosts. We thank you for joining us as we give God a time in our lives together. So in our very special time, that those of you who are joining online, you're in for a special treat tonight. My name is Minister Tony, and I'm your host tonight. And joining me is my lovely um, girl, my lovely niece tonight, who is the lead pastor here. Sister Angela... Um, some solo tonight. All right. So I would like to uh, ask Ms. Dante and Ms. Lewis um, to join us in one word of prayer. I will now welcome the house of worship and pray as we praise the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Heavenly Father, we come before your throne of grace. Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you for your amazing grace. Welcome, welcome everyone. Tonight we're going to be having another round of songs to make us feel like we are in the house of the Lord. And we ask that you sing with us. And tonight we're going to start with a, ver a song that you're going to hear us telling you to wave and tell somebody if you love them. But it's going to be, <laughs> smile everybody, smile. Smile, everybody smile, everybody smile, everybody smile, everybody smile, smile, everybody smile, everybody smile, everybody smile. Why don't you greet somebody in Jesus' name? Don't you tell them that you love them in Jesus' name? Tell them we can work together in Jesus' name. Everybody smile. Jesus loves you. Everybody smile. Jesus loves you. Love, love. Everybody. Why don't you love everybody? Why don't you love? Why don't you love? In Jesus' name, tell them we can work together. In Jesus' name, everybody smile. Jesus loves you. Everybody smile. 
everybody smile. Jesus loves you. Stand up and tell me if you love my Jesus. Stand up and tell me if you love my Lord. I want to know if you love my Jesus. I want to know if you love my Lord. Now clap. But I can't do without him. That is why I love him so. He's so real to me. If you know the Lord is keeping you, what you gonna worry about? If you know the Lord is keeping you, why don't you sing and shout? Glory, hallelujah, praise his name. Every day is just the same. If you know the Lord is keeping you, what you gonna worry about? That's your burden. On Jesus, for he cares for you. Cast your burdens on Jesus, for he cares for you. Higher, 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 higher. Higher, 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 higher. Lift Jesus higher. One more time. Higher, higher. Super, 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 supernatural power. Super, 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 supernatural power. This little light of mine, this little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Oh, this little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Yes, this little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Don't let Satan blow it out, don't let Satan blow it out. I'm gonna let it shine, oh, don't let Satan blow it out. I'm gonna let it shine, don't let Satan blow it out. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Hide it under a bushel, no, hide it under a bushel, no. I'm gonna let it shine, oh, hide it under a bushel, no. I'm gonna let it shine, hide it under a bushel, no. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Let it shine till Jesus comes. Let it shine till Jesus comes. I'm gonna let it shine, oh, let it shine till Jesus comes. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine till Jesus comes. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Amen. 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 Another time now. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord, church. 
listen to me. As is not a lot of us inside here in about Uno can look like that. I am putting out a lot of energy right here, and everybody looking like they fast asleep. Wake up, church. And now we're going to sing the theme song. Please stand up. Sometimes life gets rough and you don't know who to trust. There are times when things seem right, but underneath it all, there's a pain you feel inside that you can no longer hide. Why don't you give God a chance? chance. Let him fill the void inside you. Heal the pain you try to hide. Why don't you give God a chance? Give God a chance. Let him be your guide. He'll never leave your side. Just give God a chance. Sometimes you're all alone and your burdens drown your soul. There are times you think you know the answer to it all. On Jesus you refuse to call. Why don't you give God a chance? Give God a chance. try to hide why don't you give God a chance give God a chance let him be your guide he'll never leave your side just give God a chance why don't you give God a chance The pain you try to hide, why don't you give God a chance? Give God a chance, let Him be your guide, He'll never leave your side. Just give God a chance, let Him be your guide, He'll never leave your side. Just give God a Chance. Good night, everybody. Uh, please bow your heads with me wherever you are as we pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we just want to say thank you so much, Lord, for blessing us and keeping us alive, bringing us to church this evening. Lord, we've come another day, Father, to hear your word, to worship you, to surrender everything to you and to draw closer to you. We pray, Father, that you be with us, Lord, be with all our friends that are listening online, Father. Bless them, Father, even as they've come to listen to your word. We pray, Father, for the preacher as well, that you continue to bless him, Father, and continue to speak through him. We pray, Lord, also for our members, Father. Help somebody, Lord, faith be in you and draw closer to you. And bless us all, Father, as we continue to strive to do our best for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Let the power of the Holy Ghost fall on me, anointing.
shall always be my song of praise for it was grace that bought my liberty I do not know just why he came to love me so he looked beyond my faults and saw my needs I shall Praise the Lord. He looked beyond all my faults and he saw my need. Thank you, Jesus. What an amazing God we serve. We've come now. We're at the time when we are inviting you to get into your pockets and uh, give a donation towards this evangelistic series. And as was said a few nights ago, we like the jingle bells, but also we prefer the silent night. As these meetings um, uh, cost uh, a bit to put on. So we're going to ask you to donate in whatever way you can from the various platforms that you will see uh, in the video right after this prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that we are collaborators with you in your vineyard. And we've come now, Lord, to return to you some of what you've blessed us with. I ask, Lord, that these offerings that shall be given tonight 
will be used wisely to help to hasten, to finish the gospel and to hasten your coming. Into your hands I present all of us here tonight and those in Guelph, those in Milton, and those who are joining us from around the globe. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. The Give God a Chance evangelistic series was designed to reach the unreached. Your faithful financial gift can help to reach so many more. To make your financial gift, you can use your credit or debit card via the Adventist Giving app. You can select either Northwest Brampton SDA, Milton SDA, or Guelph SDA. You can also mail a check to either Northwest Brampton Seventh-day Adventist Church, 25 Bankkirk Drive, Unit 7 and 8, Brampton, Ontario, L7A 1A6. Or you can mail your check to Guelph SDA, 114 Lane Street, Ontario, N1E 4N2. You can also mail your check to Milton SDA, 123 Main Street East, Milton, Ontario, L90, 1 and 4. Another way that you can make a financial gift is by using Interact Transfer. Your funds can be emailed to either NW Brampton, Treasurer at AdventistOntario.org or Milton Treasurer at AdventistOntario.org or Guelph Treasurer at AdventistOntario.org. And of course, your regular tithes and offerings are welcome. For those attending in person, you may drop them off in the offering receptacles at church. Thank you once again for your faithful giving. God bless. Good night, all. I tell you something, I have tonight the opportunity to bring to you the health emphasis series. And I'm talking to you tonight about A. We started off with start anew. You know, it's supposed to be new start. But for this series, we use it start anew. So instead of eight laws of health, it's nine laws of health. So tonight I'm going to be talking to you about air. As we continue in with our health emphasis theme for this series, Give God a Chance to Start Anew, we encourage you to use God's law of health to improve your health. From the acronym Start Anew, we look at temperance last Sunday night. Now we are looking at the A for air. Have you ever wondered why air is so abundant, but we can't see it? When I think of air, I think of how amazing God is to us. He is omnipotent, omnipresent, but we can't see him. Even though we can't see him, we can't live without him. Just like we can't live without air. So as we continue... We breathe in oxygen and exhale carbon, carbon, carbon dioxide, sorry, but plants do the opposite. Plants use the carbon dioxide that we exhale to make their food and less, less of oxygen as their byproduct. God is infinite wisdom created that balance. So the relationship between plants and animals to use air wisely. I'm encouraging you today to go out to the park. I can't wait <laughs> for the sun to come. <laughs> to go hiking and use the spring, summer, and fall as much as possible. You know, I like camping. And I tell you something, when I'm out there, I can't do much now, but I love to enjoy. We are, um, due to COVID, we have masks up. We don't breathe properly. But now that the spring is coming, 
summer is coming, we can remove the mask, we can go out and enjoy ourselves. As Psalm 137 verse 14 says, I will praise thee for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works and that my soul knoweth right. So as we listen now, the presentation of Dr. Darlene Delaney, Doctor of Nutrition, who will further discuss this on air. Let's go to the video. Today, in the New START acronym, we're focusing on A for air. Oxygen is vital to each of the trillions of cells that make up your body. Are you getting enough good quality air? Let's take the air inventory test that you can find in the wonderful book, Health Power, by Drs. Ludington and Deal. Right now, without changing anything about the way that you're sitting or breathing, I want you to answer these following questions. Number one. How are you sitting right now? Is your spine straight? Are you slouching? Are your shoulders rolled forward? Number two, observe your breathing for a few moments. Is it shallow or is it deep? Number three, do the clothes you are wearing or the chair you are sitting in restrict your breathing? Number four, is the room you are in well ventilated with fresh air? or is it closed and stuffy? Number five, have you or will you exercise today? Number six, have you eaten a high fat meal today? A high fat meal reduces your blood's ability to carry oxygen. Number seven, when was the last time you got up and moved around? Have you taken a break or done some deep breathing during the past couple hours? Your body operates on oxygen. Make sure you get enough by exercising, keeping your house well ventilated, and pausing frequently to take slow, deep breaths. If you want additional information on healthy living, visit our It Is Written website at www.itiswrittencanada.ca. Go to the Live Healthy page and you'll find links to lots of great resources. See you next time. Amen, amen, amen. Sure need air. Good evening again, everyone. Welcome those who are joining us on YouTube or Facebook or Instagram or, or Zoom or whatever social platform that you're using tonight. We continue our evangelistic series. And tonight we have another riveting sermon to be delivered by the man of God himself, Pastor Dane Fletcher. Now, Pastor Dane Fletcher, he may have originated from the beautiful Spice Island of, of Grenada. He may have been from St. George's, Grenada. Or he possibly um, uh, uh, Bridgestone, Barbados, or Castries, St. Lucia, or Port of Spain, Trinidad. But some reason, for some reason, the stork dropped him off, dropped him off <laughs> in the Next best parish in the beautiful island of Jamaica, the parish of Hanover, next to the parish of Westmoreland. But from the district of Rejoin, Hanover, and Sister Frances would like to let us know it's the best community in Jamaica, because she was born there as well. Pastor Fletcher accepted the Lord at age 18, and he's never looked back. He's an ambassador for the kingdom of God, is fully committed and his official assign assignment is sharing the good news of the kingdom of heaven. 
He has a bachelor's of arts degree from the Northern Caribbean University in religion, master's of arts in theology and politics and faith-based organizations from King's College, London. But the only politics, the only politics <laughs> he speak about is the politics of Jesus. Somebody ought to say amen. Mm -hmm. Because guess what? Jesus saves. It's so simple. He was, he's a pastor. He's a teacher for over 19 years. My goodness, no wonder. His best profession. He's currently serves as youth and chaplaincy and public campus ministries director of the Jamaica Union of Seventh-day Adventist churches. He's married. He's married to Kadish. And they produce one son. What are you waiting on, brother? He solicit our prayers as we worship the Lord. So please, pray for our speaker tonight, Pastor Dane Fletcher. Before he comes, we shall be favored with special music from the man in the sycamore tree. Brother, our beloved brother, Keith Nunes. God bless you. Good evening, everyone. He didn't throw the clay away. Amen. Empty and broken, I came back to him. A vessel unworthy, so scarred with sin. But he did not despair. He started over again. And I blessed the day. He didn't throw the clay away. Over and over, he molds me and makes me into his likeness. He fashions the clay, a vessel of honor I am today, all because Jesus didn't throw the clay away. He is the potter, and I am the clay, molded in his image. He wants me to stay, but when I stumble and I fall, and my vessel breaks, he just picks up the pieces, he didn't throw the clay away.
because Jesus didn't throw the clay away. Amen, amen, amen. A vessel of honor I am today. All because Jesus didn't throw the clay away. For some of us, we should have been ditched and dismissed a mighty long time ago. We should have been placed into the incinerator of terminal destruction. But we have been spared by mercy and saved by grace. If you know that you are not deserving of life, and you know if it weren't for God's goodness, just praise the Lord right where you are. Pause for a moment. Give God the glory. Pause for a moment and celebrate the gift of life. It is high time. The time is getting late. I trust that you've had a good day. But even if you've not had a good day, I pray that by the power and the mercy of God, your day will get even better. I want you to be assured that as long as you are faithful to God, things will get better and not bitter. I want to say it again. As long as you are faithful to God, your life will get better and not bitter bitter because somebody needs to be reminded this evening that in the presence of the Lord there is fullness of joy and at his right hand there are pleasures forevermore so if it is full it just can't get any fuller uh, in the presence of the Lord there is fullness of joy so if you want to have a good time just tarry a little longer in the presence of almighty god you are such a blessed and beautiful people i want you to be assured of that you're such a blessed and beautiful people i want to thank elder cornish for his kind words of introduction and while i'm here please note that i'm not so much concerned about my nationality i'm truly proud to be jamaican i was born jamaican and that won't ever change but i see myself as a citizen of the kingdom of god so all those who are citizens of god's kingdom must know that it doesn't matter where you're from you should celebrate the goodness of god celebrate the goodness of god believe that god's goodness is running after me and you should be assured too that god's goodness is running after you and without delaying any longer, without delaying any longer, wherever you are, you may be in the sanctuary, you may be in your home, you may be someplace watching this message. I pray that God, by the power of his Holy Spirit, will draw divinely close to you and you will experience the transforming power of the Holy Spirit. Your heads are bowed, your eyes are closed. Our Father and our God, do what only you can do for us in Jesus' name. Do what only you can do for us tonight, O oh God. So here we are. I, I ask that you journey with me along this uh, beautiful experience, this beautiful path, as we observe this very solemn and sacred subject not low risk but no risk family investment it's not no risk it's not low risk it's no risk family investment no risk family investment it is believed that everything in life comes with a risk it is risky even to be alive because if you are alive the, the likelihood if, is that if time lasts, you will end up dead. It is risky to travel on the road because the likelihood is that somebody may end up in a collision. And sometimes the collision can be fatal. I'm submitting to you that life itself is a risk. But while life itself is a risk, Somebody needs to know that when it comes on to some things, they may have little risk 
or they may have no risk. Tonight, I will be speaking of an unconventional investor who became the world's richest man. And I know you're guessing. Somebody may be guessing that it could be, could have been Steve Jobs, who unfortunately is no longer with the living. Yes, somebody may be guessing that it may be Warren Buffett. Mm -hmm. Yes, you may be guessing. Another person may be wondering if it is Jeff Bezos. Mm -hmm. I know you may be guessing. Somebody may be guessing that it may be Bill Gates. Mm -hmm. Yes, I know you may be guessing. Others may be guessing that it may be Mark Zuckerberg. Yes, I know you may be guessing. Others may wonder if it is Elon Musk. Mm -hmm. I know you may be guessing. And yes, 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 some of you who are aware of my context, that I am from Jamaica and that you are in Canada, you may be guessing that I'll be telling you about the Jamaican Canadian billionaire Michael Leachin. But I want to let you know that I'll not be speaking about any of these gentlemen, but still yet, I'll be speaking of an unconventional investor who became the world's richest man. I'll be speaking about a man who grew up in a hostile environment where the odds were stacked up against him. Uh, skepticism, agnosticism, and atheism, even uh, pessimism could not have dissuaded him. He prioritized his goals and took carefully calculated risks and made a fortune for himself and his family. Tonight, my beloved brothers and sisters, my dear friends, wherever you are, if you are from or connected with the church at Milton, the church at Guelph, or the church at Northwest Brampton, it doesn't matter where you're from, you could be beyond the borders of Canada. I invite you this evening to journey with me and to, 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 to take the risk. And, and when I say take the risk, it really is no risk because the, 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 the rewards will be so great that you will, you will not lose one thing. You know, in life, we take risks with various types of investments. I know that some persons take risks by investing on the stock market. Others take risks by investing in gold, some in uh, cryptocurrencies. And then there are some who take risk in investing in real estate. And some may believe that Real estate is a low risk kind of an investment. And in fact, when we consider the real estate market, even within the context of the pandemic, prices have not fallen, but are on a continuum of an upward climb. It would suggest that many persons who would have invested in real estate made sound and solid low risk high reward investments my beloved brothers and sisters i i want you wherever you're from whether you're young or old to consider to consider with me what matters most to you in life even as you make your life's choices journey with me then the book of beginnings the book of beginnings the book of genesis and we begin by looking at the account of what transpired not long after God created Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. Journey with me to the book of beginnings. And we understand in chapter 6 that the Bible says, And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. And the Lord said, 
My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh. Yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years. There were giants in the earth in those days. And also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men, which were of old men of renown. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, and the creeping thing, and the fowls of the air, for it repented me that I have made them. And I will pause at this passage. Yes, I am talking about no risk family investment, even within the context of reflection on the book of Genesis, that after God made human beings, male and female, uh, men and women, that after God looked upon what would have befallen human beings, looking at the condition of their minds, that the, their hearts, their thoughts were only evil continually, but the Bible says it repented God that he had made man. In other words, God became sorry that he made human beings. It grieved God to the core of his soul. God, who would have looked upon this earth, he would have made all provision before he formed Adam from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils a breath of life. And even after he would have looked at Adam, the lonesome Adam in the Garden of Eden, and did the most spectacular task in taking a rib from Adam's side and making for him a tender and delicate beauty in the form of Eve to the extent that when Adam saw Eve, he could no longer keep his peace. He leapt for joy and declared, she is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. Therefore, she shall be called woman. Look, my friends, God made every provision for human beings. And don't forget, I am talking about no risk family investment. No risk. There is absolutely no risk, no risk in the investment of which I will speak. My dear friends, God looked upon the earth and God saw that the earth was heading down, that is, human beings on the earth were heading down a slippery slope. Everything considered was devious. Every thought of the mind was evil. God looked at the condition of the world. It would appear to me that when God looked at the earth in Genesis chapter 6, that God might have very well been in a similar position as we are now. For when we consider this world, we know that it is a dreadful and terrible place. Just today, in Brooklyn, New York, there was bombing and there were shootings on trains. People going about their business, but evil, evil disturbed their psyche, evil, evil disturb their experience just today. And we're not talking about the evil that is existing right now in Ukraine with Putin's war. We are not talking about that kind of evil. We're not talking about evil of gangs. We're not talking about the evil of rape. We're not talking about the evil of, 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 of smuggling children and, and having all forms of child abuse. We're not talking about the evils of spousal abuse because some of you listening to me right now may very well be a victim of the evil in this life. 
You may be a victim right now. I'm talking about no risk family investment. Now I, I speak within the context of family. Not to suggest that if you're an individual you can't make this investment. But as this investment unfolds, it is an investment which involves all members of the family. I speak to you, if you are a mother, this is your kind of investment. If you are a father, this is your kind of investment. If you are a husband, this is your kind of investment. If you are a wife, this is your kind of investment. If you are a boyfriend, this is your kind of investment. If you are a girlfriend, this is the, your kind of investment. If you are a son, this is your kind of investment. If you are a daughter, this is your kind of investment. It doesn't matter if you are young or if you're old, this is your kind of investment. This is your kind of an investment. We look in this story that when everybody else is filled with evil, when everybody else is rebelling against the order of creation, when everybody else is rebelling against the standard of righteousness, the Bible declares in verse 8 of Genesis chapter 6, Yes, my friends, I want you to know that it doesn't matter how dark, sinful, and degenerate the world is. There will be at least one person who will make the difference for God. The Bible says, but Noah, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. I'm talking about no risk. Family investment, no risk family investment. I will soon explain to you what it means for Noah to have found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And I'm submitting to you that Noah might not have had the fortune of a Bill Gates. Noah might not have had the fortune of a Mark Zuckerberg. So Noah might not have had the fortune of a Jeff Bezos or Elon Musk, but Noah became the richest man on the earth. And Noah gained a fortune, not only for himself, but also for his family. So Noah considered the alternatives and decided to take the risk anyhow. The risk of believing the risk of trusting God. Noah decided to take the risk and make that leap, that move of faith. But we are told in Hebrews 11 verse 6 that without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he who comes to God must know that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And tomorrow night I'll be speaking more about this verse as I share in the subject on shackled faith. But tonight I want to let you know that Noah took the risk of believing God. Noah took the risk of trusting God at his word. Noah lived at a time when the ungodly lifestyle of the antediluvians, that is those who lived before the flood, the flood which took place in the year 1656 Anomundo, 1656 years since creation. Noah lived at a time when the ungodly lifestyles of the antediluvians emitted a stench that gave God an upset stomach to the point that a God had no choice but to vomit them into the boisterous and fiery stream of terminal destruction. For as much as God's anger steamed, as his wrath boiled with fury, mercy and grace solidified as grace became evident because Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Now I want you to know that Noah, Noah who at that time lived and he observed what was happening, we must note carefully that in as much as Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord, that according to Titus 
Titus 2 verse 11 is not only Noah to whom grace appeared for the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. You know, in this experience, while some people may be suggesting that grace is a New Testament gift, the account of Noah finding grace in the book of Genesis highlights the fact that grace is not a New Testament gift, but that grace is an Old Testament treasure. The Bible says that Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. You know what grace is? Grace is favor. Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. And I've got good news for you this evening to let you know that it doesn't matter how much evil is around you. It doesn't matter what the naysayers and the detractors are saying or, or doing. As Noah found grace, as Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord, you can find grace. You can find favor. I've come by here just to let you, my brother, just to let you, my sister, just to let you, you who feel forsaken, you who feel abandoned, neglected, you who have been abused. Yes, you on the brink of giving up. I've stopped by here to let you know that you can find favor in the eyes of the Lord. I've come by here tonight just to let you know that God favors you. The devil may want to destroy you. The devil may want to deceive you. The devil may want you to lose out on life's greatest investment. But I've come by here to let you know that God favors you. And if you believe it, stop right where you are and type it in the chat. God favors me. Tonight, I want to let you know that God's favor is falling on you right where you are. For if Noah in the antediluvian age, for if Noah in an age filled with sin, immorality, and iniquity, for if Noah could have found grace, if Noah could have found favor in the eyes of the Lord, there is absolutely nothing that can prevent you from finding favor in God's eyes. God favors. You know, life is of such that sometimes when you go through your difficulties, you say that the odds are against you. And when we talk about odds, odds pertain to gambling sometimes. I want to let you know that for gambling, it's really a matter of chance that the probability is highly against you. The, 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 the probability for those who gamble is very slim because those who are bookers, those who are into gambling, they place or, or they make their games in order that those who own the business are most likely to prosper. But I've come by here tonight to let you know that in as much as it seems like evil is about to gain the victory across the world, the only way you can lose, the only way you can miss out is if you decide not to accept the gift of God. Only you can go against yourself. The grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared unto all. I'm talking about no risk, family investment. Family, because it doesn't matter who you are in the family, this investment is for you. Interestingly, there are three things that were said of Noah. One, Noah was a just man. That is, he was a righteous man. So in the midst of immorality, because of the grace of God, Noah was a just man. Now, now, I want you to know that you don't have to be good enough in order to invest. You, you don't 
<laughs> Can I tell you something? Can I tell you something tonight? You see, whenever you are going to invest, you need to have an initial sum. You need to have an initial sum in order to invest. Can I tell you that when it comes to God, <laughs> God had already deposited an initial sum by sending Jesus to die for you. So you don't even need to provide the initial sum. Initially, God made you. Initially, God blessed you. Initially, God provided a way out for you. God is your initial sum. So Noah was a just man. He was just as a result of the grace of God. Noah was perfect in his generations. And Noah walked with God. Now, now, now I believe that Noah became a just man and that Noah was perfect in his generations simply because he walked with God. No, 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 no. I believe that God is peculiar. God is peculiar even with the language that is used to communicate the power of the gospel, the power of the good news of salvation. I've never yet seen in scripture or anywhere where it speaks about anybody running with God, but that it speaks about walking with God. Now, I want to let you know that it is of great importance that we focus on the walk because some people want to move fast. We, we, they, they want to run ahead of themselves. They, they are not patient enough, but I want you to understand that it is a walk with God. It is moving one step at a time, which means that you may not be where you need to be, but you are heading in the right direction. Can I tell somebody that you need to head in the right direction? You need to move in the right direction as you make one step, one step, one step, one day at a time with Jesus. And, and, and can I tell you, can I tell you, when you make one step, one day at a time, you will benefit from the compound factor. Similarly to when you invest and, and you have interest, uh, bearing interest upon interest. That's how it is when you decide to spend quality time with God walking with God, confessing and forsaking your sins. For we're told in 1 John 1 verse 9 that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So Noah walked with God. What a walk that was. What a walk. Don't you want to walk with God tonight? Don't you want to be like Father Noah? Genesis 6, verse 22, sums up Noah beautifully. Noah did everything just as God commanded him. And the same that was said of Noah can be said of you. Do you want to do everything just as God commands you? I, I submit to you that you cannot obey God and lose your way. And so tonight I encourage you to decide to be one, one who will make a difference. Decide to be one, one who will make the best investment choice. For when you consider what is happening around you, I, I join the songwriter in singing, saying that is only what is built on Christ will last. Only what is built on Christ will last. And so tonight I say, on Christ, the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. I will not allow the pleasures of sin to lure me into the fields of quicksand set up by the devil, but I will move forward one step at a time. Yes, I may not be moving quickly, but one step is good enough. One step at a time. For someone once said, progress is progress anyhow, as long as you are moving in the right direction. I encourage you tonight, my friends, just move, move with Jesus. So Noah, Noah assessed the condition. He observed that evil prevailed upon the land. And God said that surely I will bring a 
up to the iniquity of human beings. Surely one of these days I will destroy the earth with a flood. And so God commanded Noah to build an ark. And Noah considered his context. Noah considered what was happening around him. Should he live, live as though life will last only for a moment. Should he live and just have a good time or should he live and trust God? Noah considered his options and Noah decided to trust God. He did exactly as God commanded him. Noah, I, I, I want to let you know that Noah decided to hold on to what he considered the best opportunity at hand. You know, others around Noah were investing in nightclubs. Mm -hmm. And some might have even had some fortune schemes, Ponzi schemes. Some might have had some super lotto. Yes, people were about having fun. They might have indulged in casino gambling. Whatever they might have done, people were all about having fun, investing their time in satisfying their sinful and their fleshly desires. But Noah considered the best opportunity at hand. When we look at Noah, Many persons would consider Noah to be a waste man. He wasted his time. But when we consider his CV, we observe that he has the record of being the most unproductive evangelist of all time. For after 120 year campaign, did I say 120 year, 120 year campaign? Not 120 hours. Not a three week campaign as we are having, but after a 120 year campaign, only a few converts and all except his immediate family die before the end of the campaign. And take Noah to our times. Take Noah to our times. I, I, I doubt that Pastor Montague or Pastor Dre, Pastor Wynn or Pastor Dre would have wanted Noah to be in their pulpits because Noah was the most unproductive preacher around town. Noah preached and hardly anyone believed. But I've stopped by here this evening to suggest that one thing that is evident from this gut-wrenching story is that God does not need us on his side in order to be right. Whether you believe his word or not, God is right. God does not need your vote in order to be God. But as long as he is God, whatever he says, will come to pass. Consider what is happening around you. When we consider the, 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 the realities of our time, war upon the land, when we observe that there are people, children being unthankful, unholy, ungodly, we must observe that these are the fulfillment of Bible prophecies. We look and we see that there is famine and there is pestilence, we must conclude that surely the word of God is coming to pass. And I say that like Noah, the best thing to do is to find grace in the eyes of the Lord. And, and to find grace doesn't mean that grace was lost. For I, I had a close observation as I looked at the text what it means for one to find grace. And, and it doesn't mean that you are moving about and, and, and you look and, and you happen to pounce upon grace in one place, but that it means when I look at what find means, it, it means that you hold on to it. Can I tell somebody that grace is around you? God's favor is around you. You are favored, but you won't Claim the favor. I submit to you. Do not be distracted or disillusioned by that old scoundrel called the devil. Hold on to the grace of God. 
cling to God's favor. If it weren't for your God's favor on your life, you would have been dead and buried. Your marriage should have been wrecked, but God favored you. You should have lost that job, but God favored you. You should have succumbed to your injury, but God favored you. You should have had a terminal illness, but God favored you. You should not have been where you are today in life. You were ruled out as being uh, un, you may have been ruled out as being unqualified but God favored you. You are alive by the favor of God. Submit to you that you are to consider not just a no, low risk, but a low risk, no risk investment. When we look at Noah, we see that Noah was brought up at a time when he observed that those close to him, his relatives, had a good account of God. But, but, but Noah was not about borrowed faith. Because sometimes we talk about what our parents and our grandparents have done it's not about a borrowed faith. Your parents or your grandparents' faith will not suffice. What matters now is your faith. The investment that you make in journeying with God, in walking with God as Noah walked with God. For when we look at Noah, we understand that a walk with God is never wasted time. Invest some time to walk with God. Invest some time to be committed to God. Invest the rest of your life right now with God so that you can receive the best of your life. I submit again, invest the rest of your life so that you can have the best of your life. Invest the rest of your life with God. Let's walk with God. If we look at Genesis 5, we will observe that Noah's great-grandfather was Enoch. And this same man, Enoch, never faced death because God took him away when he was still a young man of three, 365 years. And yes, I, considering that men at that time lived to be over 900 years, at 365 years, Enoch was still a young man. And I, I want to let you know, my friends, that... If you really want to live for a long time, you should walk with God. Enoch lived concurrently with Adam on the earth for 308 years. So yes, the creation story was real for Enoch. And Adam was not just another being. Adam is the only person who had no mother but God. For Adam literally walked and talked with God as a man walks and talks with his friends. For Adam is not only, God is not only Adam's heavenly father, but God is also his earthly father. Methuselah, Noah's grandfather, the man who lived the longest and died at the age of 969 years, died in the year of the flood. He lived concurrently with Adam for 243 years, considering that people were not scattered across the face of the earth until after the flood at the Tower of Babel, it would be useful to know that it is quite likely that Methuselah must have known and would have met Adam who would have told him the creation story that there was a time when human beings were free from sin. And Lamech, Noah's father lived 56 years on this earth with Adam. Adam must have told Methuselah who would have told Noah that there was a time when flower never faded, grass never withered, and yes, the rose was not defected with thorn, uh, with thorn and pain, and sickness were not yet born, unfaithfulness was not yet hatched, 
Lions were vegetarians. Yes, I mean they were herbivores. And even and unlike how women are now, was not afraid of lizards and roaches. I can see Methuselah telling his grandson Noah that Adam, yes, Adam said there was a time when life was great as my wife and I walked with leisure and pleasure, hand in hand, in the garden, drinking from the river of life, eating from the tree of life. And guess what? We were naked and we were not ashamed because we were covered by the resplendent glory of God. There was a time when sin did not yet corrupt because Satan did not yet interrupt and so death could not disrupt. Between you and me, my friends, we must live knowing that whenever God's glory departs, we are left exposed to the perils of the elements. Whenever God's glory departs, we are naked and we are left with nothing but shame. The glory of God departed, not just from Adam and Eve, not just from the Garden of Eden, but the glory of God departed from the earth, all because people failed to walk with God. Inasmuch as God's glory departed to the extent that it grieved him, uh, that he made man, even though it was a time of moral and spiritual decadence and a time of great catastrophe. One man, Noah, found grace in the eyes of the Lord as he invested time in walking with God. What will you do for the rest of your life? Will you live without considering the alternatives? Look at life. There is but one way. And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I submit to you then that if it is that you're going to escape, escape death and destruction, you should follow Jesus. There's absolutely no risk, my friends, if you take the risk to secure your eternal destiny. Look at Noah now. I'm coming to a close. I'm coming to a close. Look at Noah now. What would Noah lose if he would have built an ark and no rain came? He might have been embarrassed and considered a fanatic. He might have lost favor of his neighbor and those within his community. Yes, my friends, he could have been seriously embarrassed. But what would you prefer? Would you prefer to be embarrassed among your neighbors as you strive to do right and be faithful to God? Or would you prefer to be embarrassed even as you would have scoffed at God's plan of salvation? Would you prefer to be embarrassed when you would have observed that, that life Life will end and there is absolutely no way out. I submit to you that it is a, not just a low risk, but it is, it is a no risk investment when you decide to follow God. For, for, for while you observe this situation, I, I submit to you that what if Christianity does not make sense? If Christianity doesn't make sense, at the end of the day, you will still live a more healthy lifestyle. If Christianity doesn't make sense, you would still get to spend quality time with your family and have a good family life. You would still not indulge in wanton and reckless living. If Christianity doesn't make sense, really, you will end up losing nothing. Right now, if all I am preaching doesn't make sense. In the end, I would have lost nothing. I believe I'm having a good life. I have a wonderful family. I believe that God has a calling on my life and I'm seeking by his grace to fulfill his purpose in my life. I, I, I am not uh, I am not bombarded by the law. I am seeking by the best of my ability to be a decent, law-abiding citizen. If all of this is, all of this does not end,
end with any salvation from sin. If all of this does not end with any me living for eternity, in the end, I would have lived a peaceful and more satisfying life. There's nothing to lose when you decide to live for God. Look at Noah. Noah is preaching. And Noah is preaching. And he's hammering. Making the, the hammering in, in, in the ark. Every strike of the hammer sends a message. Every sound of the hammer against the wood sends a strong message. But people, people passing by, they scoff, they mock, and they jeer. They, they, they look at Noah and say, Father Noah, tell us where you will sail that lovely boat. It really looks nice. In fact, Noah was such a good, influential, and, and, and wonderful citizen that many of them would have helped Noah to even build the ark. May help Noah to build the ark while they would mock him and jeer him. They would say, Noah, you are a good man. We are helping you, but we surely don't believe that there will be any rain. For truly there had not been any rain at that time. For there was a mist that went up from the ground to water the earth. And as they mocked and they jeered, that the minister of transportation would look and say, surely we don't have any way even to transport this Boat to the ocean. Noah, you are wasting your time. The meteorological services would have done their research and said, we have never yet seen rain. Surely, Noah, your efforts are but in vain. The scientists would have converged and they would have calculated the improbability and the impossibility of rain. Surely, Noah was looked at as a fanatic, but the day came, the day came, my friends, the day came. The day came. The day came. According to Genesis 7 verse 16. And they that went in, went in male and female of all flesh, as God had commanded him, and the Lord shut him in. God shut in Noah and his family. I'm talking about the greatest investment you could ever make. The no risk family investment, whether you are a male or a female, whether you are a husband or a wife, whether you are a son or a daughter, whomever you may be, the, the best investment that you could ever make is to seal your future for eternity, is to seal your moment of deliverance. Now, now I submit to you that Noah preached, Noah preached and human beings never responded to his altar call. Noah preached and Noah had brothers and sisters who would have had the same kind of great bringing like himself, but they never listened, they never heeded the call. Yes, Noah may have gone to primary or prep school, even high school and perhaps university with some of them. Maybe they were his neighbors. He preached he appealed, he begged, but they never moved, they never budged. Human beings who are supposed to be of keen intellect would not have moved, would not have budged, but animals moved. Animals moved, moved, no, never forced them. They moved of their own free will to enter the ark. And people, people around, when they saw animals moving, never even considered that Noah might have been telling the truth. People around who got the opportunity to, to escape destruction never moved and they never budged. Let me tell you, that happened. The last animal would have entered. The door of the ark was shot, shot by God himself. Here comes a time when God will shut a door, shut a door, he will shut mercy's door and 
you who would have not invested time in walking with him would lose out, lose out, lose out on the bliss of eternity. You would have lost out on being redeemed, of, on being delivered from this sin curse. Or you would have lost out. You would have lost out, my friends. Tonight, I want to let you know that for Noah, it wasn't an easy thing. It was a no-risk investment. And some of you may be saying that it must have been risky for Noah. But Noah considered everything and, and it was of no risk to him. And now, some of you may be saying, yes, yes, yes. You may be saying that truly, truly, truly Noah was saved in the ark. Uh, but the ark must have been an uncomfortable place. Tonight, I've come by here to acknowledge that surely, yes, that's how it is. The ark was an uncomfortable place, but it was safe. I submit to you that the church is not a place where everybody is comfortable, but the church is safe. When we look at the ark, we understand that while the ark is safe, it was a not not at all a comfortable place. For while Noah and his family were in the ark, there must have been dogs barking. Dogs barking around you. Yes, yes, yes. If you even give your hearts to the Lord and you, you, you become a part of his church family, there will be people in church with a dog-like attitude, a dog-like mentality. But never forget this, that the ark may not be comfortable, but it is safe. In the ark, there may be dogs squawking. Yes, yes, people may be meddling in your business and creating business that, that, that's really even not yours but remember the ark may not be comfortable but it is safe in the ark there must have been harsh name there may be noise all about you but never forget the ark may not be comfortable but it is safe in the ark there must have been donkey's brain but never forget the ark may not be comfortable but it is safe in the ark there must have been pigs Grunting. Yes, my friends, the ark may not be comfortable, but it is safe. In the ark, there must have been sheep bleating. The ark may not be comfortable, but it is safe. I, I submit to you that just as the ark was not comfortable, but it was safe. The church is a place where sometimes you will hear strange sounds. You will smell strange things. The church may not be comfortable but it is safe because when you decide to accept Jesus you must be a part of his body that fulfills his will of sharing the everlasting gospel I've come by here this evening just to let you know that Noah Noah that gentleman Noah that person who preached that message of destruction of this earth, Noah, who was able to lead his family into a saving relationship, made the best investment that one could ever make. And surely I said that Noah was careful enough to consider the options, make the right choice, invest time in walking with God to the extent that God moved him from one world to the next. For Noah lived in the world before the flood. Noah transitioned to the world after the flood. And yes, I said that Noah became the richest man in the world. For even if Noah were a pauper and, and, and he would have survived the flood, he would have been a wealthy man because wealth, has no substance when you are dead. Noah became the richest man because he invested his time, spending quality time, being fully committed to the cause of God. And as God did for you, he can did for Noah, he can do for you. One of these days, one of these days, one of these days, getting that link, decide if you want prayer, you're getting that link to decide if it is that you want Bible study, you want to visit, or if you want to be baptized or rebaptized, I want to tell you that.
Days. That's what God will say according to Revelation 22 and verse 11. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still, and he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. One of these days, one of these days, God will intervene. Noah could be considered as a stupid man, but he found grace in the eyes of the Lord. He decided to hold on to it. I submitting to you this evening that grace is passing by. God's favor is here at your doorstep. God is right here wanting to do something, something special, something spectacular for you. He wants you to experience the benefit and the blessing of salvation. One of these days, the same God who shut the door of the ark will slam shut the door of mercy as he says, it is finished, it is done, it is done, it is done, it is finished. You're getting that link and you're going to choose, you're going to choose. You're going to choose, my friends, you are going to choose. You're choosing to accept Jesus right now. We're talking about no risk family investment. What will you lose if you give your lives to God? What will you lose? Or I'll ask it differently. What will you gain if you lose, if you gain the whole world and lose your soul? What will you gain? What will you gain? Now, I just share this with you, that there was a man who had all the money that he could ever imagine that would make life better. Much money, my friends, much money. And as he considered life, he considered how it is that he would spend his future. And even as he considered how he would spend his future, he realized that the money he had could uh, buy him a house, but it could not have contributed to him having a happy home. And there he was on his dying bed. He realized that his money could buy him medicine, but his money could not buy him health. He realized that his money could provide him a caregiver, but his money could not give him deliverance. Tonight, what will you do in exchange for your soul? If you choose to follow God right now, you have nothing, absolutely nothing to lose. I urge and I encourage you, decide, decide now to give your hearts to Jesus. Join me now as we listen to that special song of appeal, as you make your decision to give your hearts to Jesus. Time's winding down, just look around us. Evil's breaking loose on every side. The devil know his time is almost over. But soon the clock will stop and Jesus Christ will split the sky. Shout it from the rooftops, proclaim it in the streets. Tell your friends and neighbors, tell everyone that you meet. We all need a savior, but we're running out of time. He's coming back at midnight, and it's 11.59. God's prepare a place for all his children. Free from fear and doubts, tears and pain. But we must choose our destination. There's just one way to heaven, and Jesus is his name. 
Shout it from the rooftops, proclaim it in the streets. Tell your friends and neighbors, tell everyone that you meet. We all need a savior, but we're running out of time. He's coming back at midnight, and it's 11.59. At the right hand of the Father, he'll soon stand to his feet. And here, son, go get my children. Bring them home to me. So shout it from the rooftops. Proclaim it in the streets. Tell your friends and neighbors. Tell everyone that you meet. We all need a savior, but we're running out of time. He's coming back at midnight. It's 11.59. Yes, Jesus is coming back soon. He's coming for a people that is ready. Washed in the blood and ready to go. Yes, friends, it's almost midnight. It's 11. It's 11.59. Tonight, tonight, tonight is almost midnight. It's 11.59. I know we would have gone a little longer tonight. But I just want to give somebody a chance. I want to give you a chance to make your decision. It's symbolically 11.59 and Jesus is coming at midnight. You have one minute, one minute. I'll tarry for one more minute, one more minute to give somebody a chance, to give you a chance to give some, to make a decision for God. You're considering your options. You realize that your living and your life will not make it. If you continue along this trajectory, you are assessing your life. You realize that you have sinned and you have done evil before God. Trust me, my friends, there is absolutely nothing to lose in following God. That's why I say it's a no risk investment. For even if you were to lose your life serving God, ultimately he who gave you life has demonstrated already he has the power to bring you back to life. Tonight it's 11.59 and Jesus is coming back at midnight. You have 30 seconds. 30 seconds is about to come. You may not know what will happen in the next 30 seconds. Jesus is coming at midnight. He's coming, he's coming, he's coming. And yes, no risk involved. No risk involved. Or even if you lose something on this earth, it will be worth it all. It will be worth it all when you hear Jesus call. It will be worth it all. It will be worth it all. My friends, it will be worth it all. No risk involved. I have decided, yes, I have decided to follow Jesus and I, I won't turn back. There are 15 seconds, 15 seconds to go. I want to pray for you. You're signing up that card. You're asking for prayer. You're asking for Bible study. You want to make your decision for Jesus because you know now is the acceptable time. You're signing up. Tonight, I want to pray for you with your heads bowed and your eyes closed. Father and our God, do what only you can as you unleash your spirit to help your sons and your daughters to know tonight that you favor them. Your favor has fallen on them right now to the extent that only them can stop themselves from being saved. Do what is necessary to provoke them, to prick their consciences. Do not allow them to be at ease until they would have made a full surrender. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 God bless you. Amen, amen, and amen. Didn't our heart burn within us tonight? We want to thank evangelist um, Dane Fletcher for another lively, but a stirring sermon. And here are some takeaways from that sermon, this sermon tonight. Take a risk on believing God and trusting in his word. The grace of God is available to everyone. Grace is an Old Testament favor. 
It's available to everyone long before the New Testament. God provided the initial sum in the form of Jesus Christ to die for our sins. It is not a race, but a daily walk with Jesus. And the final one, it says, wealth has no substance when you're dead. Wealth has no substance when you're dead. Let us make it our settled decision to accept the Lord Jesus as our Lord and Savior tonight. I want to thank those who watched, who were tuned in on Facebook and Zoom and YouTube and Instagram and whatever other one you're on. Thank you so much. It has been a pleasure to be hosting this service tonight and for Northwest Brampton and Milton and Guelph who have generously sponsored this campaign. We want to thank you. Tomorrow night we'll continue at 7.15 barring any um, technical issues. I'm asking the church to pray that tomorrow night there'll be no technical issues. Tomorrow's night sermon is Unshackled faith. Unshackled faith. But more than that, something special is going to happen tomorrow night. It's prayer night. Hallelujah. I thought I would have heard an hallelujah there. Much prayer, much power. So come and fill this place tomorrow night as we worship the Lord. If you're in Guelph, I know the Guelph church is open. Go out to the church tomorrow night and let's pray together. See you. And now I'll turn over to the praise team to end off our service tonight. God bless you. See you again tomorrow night. Jesus, now more than ever we are sailing in stormy weather. All God's children should get together. Cause we need Jesus now more than ever. Oh, Jesus now more than ever. We are sailing in stormy weather. All God's children should get together. Cause we need Jesus now more than
we need Cause we need Jesus now more than ever Yes we need, yes we need